Most of you probably don't know this, but when I first came back to Age of Empires 2 in 2013, I played primarily scenarios. This isn't at all unique, actually. A lot of people have done this because scenarios are easy to understand, you don't have to worry about the economy, and well, sometimes it's just a different experience. The scenario that I put over 2,000 hours into is called CBA, which stands for Castle Blood Automatic. This video is kind of an introduction to CBA. If you've never heard of it, this is how it works. Unlike Standard Age of Empires 2, in CBA, you start with zero villagers. You also start with infinite resources in some versions, or just what seems like infinite resources in others, where it would take hours and hours to run out. Each player has stone walls, gates, tower of the flies, and four castles. And these castles automatically produce units. Uh, this is not something you have to do at all. There is a timer set on this depending on what type of unit you have. And for every castle you have, you have a unit spawning. If you lose a castle, you then lose essentially one life. But that is also one castle that's producing the unit. But obviously, if you lose the fourth, you're then defeated. There is a battlefield that's towards the middle. Uh, this is where the majority of the fights are going to be taking place. And you might be thinking, how on earth do you go about playing this? So obviously, you can just patrol units into the middle and take fights, right? Um, and, you know, some fights are going to be better than others, depending on what civilizations are at play. So the core thing you need to talk about first off with CBA is, are you fighting the right type of unit? So it does take a bit of game knowledge to know the counters. For example, uh, if you're playing as the Byzantines and then there's Goths on the opponent, well, you might want to go to the other side. Experience in this game mode is obviously good. So what you can do is you can either have all the positions memorized, like people like me who have a lot of experience, as the majority of maps are all going to have players spawning in the same spot, or you can actually look through the Fog of War and you can look for the flags. So you can see, uh, here's my position. Then if you look across here, you can see green flags, you can see blue flags, and then I would, could either look at the list of civilizations and, whoops, and see what's there, or I could look down at the icons if I have those memorized. This is all important. And of course, communication and teamwork is important too, because there's other aspects that make this even more complicated. Now, the majority of civilizations start the game in the feudal age. And the way you advance through the ages is by getting kills. Generally speaking, you need fewer kills to get to castle age if you have a weaker unit, whereas you would need more to get to castle and then imperial age if you have a stronger unit. Another thing you can see here on this list is how long it takes for your units to train, as well as your max amount of units. So, for my beloved Aztecs, they're not very good in CBA, so you only need 250 kills to get to Castle Age. They train in 8 seconds as opposed to 10 like many others, and you can get to a population of 100 units. So now we've talked about kills, but what can you do when you get up to the next stage? So basically, once you make it up to the next stage, you have a blacksmith and then you have a university. If you make it to Castle Age, you can research all the upgrades there. And then if you make it to the Imperial Age, you can research in these as well. Uh, and then the four castles too, like conscriptions, spies, everything else. The other thing you need to factor into, and this is actually the most important thing in CBA, the one thing that you should be thinking about is raises. So to get a raise, that is when you basically take out an enemy building. And the things that qualify as a raise would be any buildings that are built by future enemy villagers, the gates, the towers, or the castles. On the list that you see here, you could see how many raises each civilization needs to get villagers. And when you get villagers, you only get two at a time. Once again, the civilizations that will struggle should have fewer raises here. For example, Britons, as their longbows are very poor at taking out buildings. Italians, another archer sieve. Malay, Karambit warriors, and the list goes on. The big one, and the historical one, I'll say, the, the two civilizations in question are typically going to be the Mayans, and then the Britons, as again, I played this back in the day, and those are really strong civilizations, but they need to get that raise. So it takes a bit of teamwork, and it takes putting your team before you, because the Mayan player, if they got villagers, could make lots of archers throughout the rest of the game. It's very easy in some ways for them to just get one raise, as long as you help them. There are other examples, but essentially you need to have a priority list on how easy it is for so-and-so to get villagers, and then how helpful it's going to end up being. This, of course, comes in with experience. Now, that's basically an introduction to CBA. Uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cast a game that I just played, and I'm going to break it down and kind of talk through strategy and, and whatever else with this. Uh, unfortunately, Capture Age, while it does work for this, doesn't show some of the important details that it's needed. So we're going to have to stick with the plain old game, and we're going to get started now. So quick little introduction. Uh, we've got my team. Uh, this is my position here. 
um, playing as the, I'm playing as the Byzantines. I've got Mr. Moy playing as the Malians here. Uh, I've got Goths for Johnny 99, and then we've got Mayans for Greg's 87. So um, already Greg's is saying player seven and player eight split. So he's talking about maybe switching positions because the Huskarls here, they're going to be in a good position to counter the Camel Archers. Goths are not going to want anything to do with the organ guns over here. I should have introduced the civs we have on the other side, but basically we've got Incas and we've got the Portuguese. And then here we've got the Tatars and the Camel Archers. And one more thing I forgot to mention to you guys. The unique units typically start off as elite, but they, whoops, excuse me, sorry. But they have uh, upgrades, um, but, but they have few age upgrades. Sorry, I got a little sidetracked by something. So, um, already I'm thinking like, let's get started on a raise. This is, it seems very complicated with some of the civilizations we're up against. Uh, Gebetto or 45 HP unit. It could be worrisome if the, the units surround it. It could easily be so by the Camel Archers, but the thing about the Gvetto that's good is you could see a raise happen quite quickly. Red seems a little uncertain on where to go at the moment. And green is obviously pushing. Like, this Death Ball of Working Guns is going to be tough to deal with. But there you go. Purple has a raise. Now, it says at the top left, two raises remaining for purple. Now, it's also going to show um, the benchmarks, basically. And all the data that I just mentioned on the right side. I don't think all versions do this. But it's a helpful thing to have, obviously. So a thing to keep track of here is purple has one raise. I mean, there's so much army here, right? And cataphracts, they're, they're not a bad unit. But uh, I knew it was going to be tough for me to get some kills if the camel archers were out there. And we got a little 2v1 against my teammate here. Uh, unfortunately, it just comes with the territory sometimes. Now, the Goths, uh, how many raises does it say? Okay, so they need two raises. They only need to kill 100 units. Like, Goths are actually insane if there's no gunpowder or units like Keshik's out. So, like, if it was Heavy Archer, if there was, like, even two Archer's Civs on their side, the Goths would be having an easier time. But you can see Gray has wiggled his way through. But he taken the fight, it wouldn't have been too good. So he's actually doing the right move here to get started on the raises. Now, watch this, guys. I don't know all these players. I actually don't play much CBA these days. I played a couple games just to get uh, into the thick of things, but I wanted to get content because I couldn't find games. Watch this from Gray. So he's going to weaken the gates. He could take it himself if he wanted to, but he's going to set this, and now it's at 73 HP. So now that's a gate that somebody else can take. This is great job from Gray. And he seems like he's really focused on that. Way. He could have used some units here to defend Teal. It's a tricky, tricky thing we've got. And then Purple's got two raises now, so needs one more to get Villagers. And there was no raises against our team except for Green taking this race here. Seems inevitable at this point. Unfortunately, these Leap Ghetto, Gebetto, excuse me, get surrounded. And here I go. Now they're trying to protect this. Uh, no one has Villagers yet, so they can't repair it or anything, right? And so I'm going to get one raise. So one raise remaining for me. So everyone's in feudal age here. There's three civilizations that I that um end up starting off in the castle age. I think it's Vikings, Malay, and Ethiopians. Back in my day, there was no Malay and Ethiopians when I played. I just played with Age of Conquerors civs. Uh, so I had to double check that, but I think it's only three. Someone can fact check me if I'm wrong. Anyways, I'm close, but I'm not going to get the second one. So Grace's first raise was really good. It actually ended up working out because the Mayan player shows up here. Something, excuse me. <coughs> I have a bit of cold, a bit of a cold while I'm recording this. I didn't actually notice that while I was playing. I was focused on all of this. Uh, but yeah, Mayan's going to end up getting a Vil. Mayans only need one. The purple and teal were very impatient with Grey. And very impatient in general. Uh, we, we can talk more about that later. The purple's like signal, 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 as if, you know, we're just, we've gone for a walk with our dog or something. And Gray actually deletes his units there, which is interesting. It might have been a strategy from him to not donate kills, but also to get more units at home. And purple, with an ambitious move here, is going for the castle. Now, I want to show you guys something. So, purple doesn't have a vill yet. Oh, no, no, purple does have vills. Okay, I'm going to tell you anyways. So, um, there's a couple things you're going to see in this game that are like CBA strategy, okay? So... The goal of this is obviously to have a good time, and I'm curious on if you guys enjoy watching this. But I also want to, like, 
talk about specific things that people do. So, um, you know, this this for purple is an interesting attempt. So he stacked his units. He's got 31 units or 34, and it makes it very difficult for the other units to hit him. Now, something that you can do if you really want a raise and there's no gates available, like let's say you have a super greedy teammate who takes all the gates, then you're like, crap, I'm not going to get a castle. The inner tower has 1900 HP. So actually, if you look at how much damage Purple's done here to this castle already, he could have taken that tower already. Uh, he's taken almost half that castle down, and Yellow had to garrison in and hop out, and it's very close. It's a sneaky move there from Purple. Anyway, sorry for pausing. I wanted to show you that. Gray took a raise there, though. That's an important thing, so I don't have a vill yet. I'll show the importance of villagers later on. You can see Teal's already planning for the long term and massing archery ranges. This is where this game gets really interesting. So there's there's green, blue, yellow, like everyone is here. So we're like, you know what? Let's YOLO and let's take yellow. Like we might be able to kill somebody right now. I think, I mean, this is just a mistake. I think we should have hit red. Like, um, I think it was my call or someone else's call. I forget at this point. Gotta love how yellow now has a vill because of one of the raises, locks the gate. And really good grouping from yellow. Wow, that was, that was so good. And Gray's going to try and get that castle. Should end up get, taking out the castle, though. The good news for Gray, as Gray loses all of his gates, we'll have to see what the teamwork looks like from these guys, because if someone overvills, like this, for example, that could really hurt you later on. Remember this moment. Does Blue get a vill here? Blue does not get a vill. Who got the vill, actually? Maybe Blue needed more. Anyways, Green's got four villagers. Which means that green got one extra raise. Yellow has villagers on this side. Red does not. So there's two out of four players without vills. Meanwhile, on this side, purple has villager. Teal has villager. And gray and I do not. Actually, gray does! Where are the villagers at? Excuse me, guys. I gotta check this. Gray has villagers in there. Okay. So, a lot's moving right now. A lot's happening. I know that this is probably a little stressful for you guys. I've never seen it before. But this is CBA, right? And it's really interesting. And actually, everyone in this game, the reason I'm so excited to upload it is because everyone really seemed like an experienced player here with some of the little tricks. I got a sneeze coming. I don't have a mute button available right now. Oh my goodness, it's teasing me. Okay. I may or may not sneeze. We'll see. Gray's villagers are inside the castle. Purple's coming to save Gray. I've been able to get a raise here, and I'm clearly not paying attention like a noob. But I do have villagers, so I'm starting to build up my stables. Red got a raise there. Red's still no villager. So red is close. And this isn't the end of the world for Grey, actually, because Grey's going to want kills. So as long as Grey keeps the villagers alive, the castles will actually slowly get kills for Grey. He's found that kind of tough to, to find any archer units. Now, yellow is an imp. I know a lot's happening, right? We've, we've got two players who advanced up through the ages. However, Yellow's been dominating so much with these cash eggs. Yellow's an imp. So it has Castle Age and Imp upgrades now. And now if you look at Yellow's point of view, Yellow also has full vision, okay? So Yellow got spies, is, is what that means. And so it's at a point now where if you get enough production buildings, you can stack on units um, on top of your spawn from your castles. So you have a potential of 250 population in this version. I don't know why it's 250 pop. I'm an old timer, so I think 200 pop is good enough. The lag is already really bad, but we're going to move on past that point. So I have vills, and I'm building stables for when I reach castle. So now I need kills. So now I'm like happy to throw away units, just get any kills I can. Gray has villagers and cannot stonewall, but Gray's obviously worried that someone could kill him. He's adding palisade walls. That's just goth problems. Green's adding stables as well, so green's going to go calf. Still, we have no villager for red and no villager for blue. It's becoming awkward, right? So yellow is clearly villed. But, like, where are they going to go? They're going to have to get me. They're going to have to get purple for gates. They cannot get this side. So it is it's so important for us to hold this position. Obviously, if blue would have had villager, blue would have been building archer ranges behind these gates. Small little, uh, another technique that people, uh, actually, hold on. Another thing that's important to note. So a lot of you guys are probably thinking, hey, T90, why don't you just delete buildings 
so they can't be raised, right? Like if someone's going to take out your gate, if I just delete it, they don't get the raise, right? And that that's true. They wouldn't get the raise. But if you delete uh, your starting gates, your towers, your or um, yeah, sorry, just your starting gates, your towers, you're immediately defeated. So you cannot delete those buildings. You can actually delete your castles, but doing so is losing a life. We'll talk more about that. But anyways, if you delete the back gate, which you can see many people have done, um, yellow hasn't done, the side walls get removed. So you see how I, I had like the, the front wall still there? It just removes the side walls. Basically, it makes it way easier for pathing for your units. So you have that tile on the side to path out. Um, so yeah, I, I'm giving you guys info. Hope you're enjoying it. It's a really good game so far. Oh, I should have actually... I'm stupid. I should have actually had this on KD. Maybe I did. I just didn't see the kills over here. So I'm actually, I think, 200 kills away from Castle Age. Or, or sorry, not 200. Now, well, now 10. And Yellow's really building out. He's going to go Cavalier, and he's going to go Cav Archer, which seems good enough. Gray. Not really building with Barracks. Needs someone to stonewall him here. But he's, he's done a great thing here. This is an experienced CBA player, clearly. And he's going to go for those castles. You get the wraparound so you can get as many units on the castle. And that's really going to hurt red. And it's also going to give us control of the map because it allows us to push out elsewhere. Out elsewhere, excuse me. Puppy Kicker here is desperate for a raise right now. So it's, it's, it's like making a desperation run for that gate. Did lose the castle in the end. Meanwhile, Mayan pushing on his own here. This is important for him because he's getting some really nice kills. However, now you've got green producing off of, like, 20 stables. And we'll see uh, it, who makes it to the Imperial Age first between them. Red did not get the gate. Wasn't even close. But now yellow, who can see everything, is making a move towards gray. And gray's, like, really vulnerable here. Gots need 250 kills. He's got 207. So, again, this is an instance where this could actually be good for him. That, that, I mean, even losing a castle wouldn't be too bad. Because if he can get to Castle Age from the kills this provides him, then maybe he could spam other things. He had to transfer his villagers into that castle there. So his villagers are now protected. All right. Complicated game. Tricky game, right? Good introduction to CBA. I know many of you guys have probably seen it before, but I'm trying to give insights. And uh, ultimately, I... I'd like to see more people play this. I think it's an underrated scenario. There's more details I can give you guys. But there's only one player above 100 pop, and that's actually Johnny right now. So he's got a lot of Huskarls. And he really needs those kills. This is becoming a problem here for the Mayan player. The green just got so many knights, and green's even confident enough to build out. Now, we don't have anyone in Imp, so we won't be able to see this yet. It's very risky. Now, that noise you just heard was me hitting Castle Age. And I noticed that green is about to, like, run over teal. So I'm telling them to be careful here, basically. And you can see my upgrades now coming in. Obviously, I don't need Chainmail Armor at all, but I already got my cab upgrades, so... Actually, whoever's point of view I was on, they must have advanced up through the next stage. Anyways, gray. Making towers as part of the wall, which is... Interesting. And now Blue trying to get the villagers here from Teal. And this is important for Teal because Teal's going to need some villagers to make walls and make even more buildings, right? Production is everything now. Keep an eye on the pops here. See Green's pop 130? See, can these villagers survive? They can into the tower. Nice save. And here I've had to do some nifty locking of my gates. Green has come to me. Purple has been all over Yellow, not allowing Yellow to expand. However, since red doesn't have a villager, yellow is building up in red's base, so he's going to have more production than any of us if that if he fills out the production there. Obviously, a pretty risky move, but if he's paying attention, he can always save the villager. Still look at that population, guys. Like, my population 60. I found it really hard to pop up here. And, well, I'm going to slowly move out now, and my units are... are going to be in a pretty big ball, but Green's here, and he's just stopping me from expanding, and it kind of stops me from helping here, but speaking of, Purple has been able to push Yellow pretty nicely, and this is so important for Gray. Now Gray's Castle Age. So Gray, I, I probably shouldn't have done this. I didn't realize Gray still had bills. 
But anyways, Granny should be building barracks here. Uh, he's adding stables. In truth, I think spamming all in, like, Huskarl Pikemen would be good enough to get him to imp. Um, truthfully, like, in Castle Age Knight is probably a more helpful unit, but it's just not the greatest long term for him. It, it, we'll see. Villagers can only build so fast, though, right? So you probably want Goths on infantry. I'm still in Castle Age. The other team has two people in Imp. Yellow and green. And green seems to be doing amazing. Yellow seems to be doing amazing. And yellow's got a nice combination. He's got heavy camels in front. And then he also has cav archers behind. And by the way, you don't play CBA if you can't appreciate a little bit of lag. So uh, be careful. Uh, or don't be careful. Sorry, I was I was thinking Gray needs to be careful. Gray's villagers. Gray's villagers. Gray's going to lose the villagers. So Gray will be without a villager now, which is obviously awful for us. And Green's going to take out the stable foundation, which is going to give Green more vills. Not the biggest deal that Green's going to get more vills. He already has vills. But a pretty big deal that Gray doesn't have vills anymore. And Greg's just trying to give some tips here to Gray. And yeah, Green is building out like crazy. Keep an eye on the pop. Sorry, I'm not used to not being able to click stuff. We are really far falling behind in population. And it's just, the big deal right now is that I just can't get to Imp. Like, I cannot seem to kill these units. Especially when my knights are patrolling back. So I was worried about this, maybe. Really hard to kill Imp units. Green's on Cavalier now. Like, them being cheaper doesn't make a difference here for Portuguese. Uh, so it actually hurts to have Portuguese now because they can't get Paladin. That's what I was thinking. Like, at least Byzantines get Paladin. Gray is going for Ferimba Camels as these units are now skipping across the map. And Teal's done a good job trying to keep Gray in this game. But Gray needs to find a raise somewhere. Now, guys, when I played... Remember earlier in this, in this cast when I told you that um, you can't delete your starting gates or your towers? Okay. So when I played, everyone played with a rule that you cannot delete a building foundation if you build it. So, like, for example, this, this stable, if someone was about to raise it, I could delete it, and it wouldn't kick me from the game. I'm an imp now, by the way, and I'm researching Cavalier there. No one seems to play by that rule anymore. So if you play and you've built a building, feel free to delete, I think. Actually, don't take my word for it. But everyone I played with today seems to have no issue with that. <laughs> it's a good strategy, right? So you don't donate more bills to people. Now, I repaired this gate earlier. Red's probably thinking that was weak. It's not so weak. I also deleted two of my castles because I'm like... I really... We're losing this game right now. So I, I figured I needed more production. That gives us a little bit of an edge. But we are getting massacred here at the moment. Yellow's still building out. So Yellow's got Archer Ranges and Stables on the way. Green's got tons of Stables. Teal is fortunately holding. This is why I said, like, why does anyone want to play to 250 pop? Uh, 250 pop is just going to make things more lag. <laughs> so enjoy the massive battles here. And you can see I'm saying we need Gray to get a vill. Yeah, Gray's priority needs to be getting a vill. Because if Gray gets a villager, Goths can be up to 200, I guess 60 population for Goths? Because it's a pop cap of 250. They can be up really fast. Alright, so now this is my point of view. Now obviously I have a little bit more insights on, what I, on what's going on. I'm trying to snipe villagers here. And look at Yellow. Yellow's a good player. Yellow notices that. I was also going to go in after Green. Now what you can do is if people aren't paying attention, their units are going to open the gate for you. You can run in. Now, Kameyooks apparently have really fat asses, so I couldn't run through there, which is disappointing. I should have gotten that villager. I remember looking back there like, what? But he was blocking the gate nicely. And now Green is trying to kill off Gray here. If they can kill off Gray, it's going to be 3v4. And even though Red doesn't have a villager, Red's Camel Archers are pretty freaking strong, and he's just in Castle. And I'm worried here. Like, I'm, I'm at 50 pop. It's not a good sign if I have all these stables queued. And we continue to lose ground. Uh, purple is going to take the moment to complain to, about Gray. Who, I mean, he lost the Vils at this point. What's he going to do? Obviously, he's not able to help that much. It can happen in scenario communities. People can be very... I don't know what it is about scenarios versus other things. Maybe there's more time to talk because they don't have to balance an eco. I feel a little bad for Gray. You know, obviously, a lot of pressure on the guy. That's been the biggest talking point so far. Here I am. I'm going to try and make some stables there because we're behind. I'm in 90 pop. 
Look at the populations. Teal, though, is at 220. So really important hold from Teal. Who's just got this big ball of Arbalest. And Grace is still going to make run for it, run for it to, to get some type of raise. But, I, you know, it's a concern about Yellow, right? Yellow's got Cav Archers, Camel, Step Lancers, too. I do have Paladin now, whereas I didn't have Paladin for the majority of this. And Teal is expanding here with the ranges. I think Green had spotted my Villager here. And is trying to get it. And is, is unable to. So that's a lot of army that's going to go down there for Green. But... Yeah, we're, we're starting to lose ground on this time. Like, you could see how important it is to get villagers and to get the production rolling, right? Yellow got the build nice and early. Green got the build nice and early. And they've been able to snowball this because of it. And unfortunately for us, it just seems like we're in big trouble. I'm desperate now. I'm going to delete my final castle. So they could use the same trick that I did to run in their gate to try and snipe Green Greensville. They could actually do that with units and get to my castle. I am busy teams, though. And, and Greg doesn't want to call it here. Greg's like, we got this. And I'm still building up on this side. Still producing stables. Teal's archer mass seems impenetrable. But we need to somehow get back on this side. Now, I think... You know, I didn't know what happened when I was playing. But I think Grace Huskarl's coming in in that moment to fight instead of go for raises. Made a really big difference. There's still no villager for Grey. It looks like yellow deleted stuff, actually. So, yeah, it looks like yellow did what I said earlier. My pop's at 130 now. Yellow's pop is at 195. Red had lost the majority of his camel archers. He's just now hit him, so he's getting upgrades, as you can see. Getting the ones that are relevant to his camel archers first. But it, remember, it's only two people with villagers on the opposing team. Whereas we have three. So it is possible to uh, for us... To get to 750 population between three players. Whereas they can only get to like... I mean, 500 plus... Whatever population of Kamiok and of uh, Camel Archers they can get. And so now, I mean, I... It's really changed drastically, right? I went from 50 pop, thinking we were finished. And all of a sudden, my pops filled up to 200. And Byzantine Paladin, I mean, no, they don't get Bloodlines in the final attack, but Paladin's Paladin, 160 HP. And, uh, you know, Purple's got plus 7 attack on the on the Camels and the Cavalier as well, and we are making big progress. Meanwhile, the, the key here is obviously to get Grey a Villager. If we can get Grey a Villager, all of us have Villagers then, and then Grey's going to be able to spam Halibs or Husk Girls or whatever, and Goths produce instantly, right? And uh, at the very least, Gray getting to Imp here has changed things a lot, right? Like, look how much faster Gray's able to spam from just three barracks. Goths are pretty insane. And Greg's is saying we win now. And it, it definitely is seeming like it. Let's see. Another raise attempt is happening there from Gray. And Yellow puts up no fight whatsoever and really doesn't make this satisfying for us. And he just calls the GG, which I'm not going to lie. You know, we I was I was at 50 pop, you know. I wanted to see a little bit more fight from the other side so we could, you know, bring this back and uh, you know, enjoy the process, but they realized the situation. They just called the GG. And uh Johnny says lovely game. I don't know if he's being sarcastic or whatnot cuz he was under so much pressure this game. But ultimately we end up getting the win here. And like I said, struggle for him. Um but he set us up and that was the important thing of this game. Think about it, man. He set me up. He made it easy for me to get villagers. I think Purple did it on his own. He also helped out Mayans massively. Now, remember the moments in the game where green had four villagers and blue had none and red had none? I don't know how many yellow ended up getting in this game. I don't know if there's like a raising counter somewhere. I guess there isn't. But that might have changed this game. So, you know, this CBA is about uh, the fights themselves and unit control. It's about teamwork with that and knowing units and unit, unit counters. But it's also strategy in trying to set up your teammates. So, you know, the reason I made this is because I think this was a really fun, really good game. It really showed the importance of getting villagers. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I wanted to talk some small tips here or there for people who uh, maybe want to get into the habit of CBA. And then for me, 
When I played CBA, it really actually helped me understand the types of units and going into fights. It helped me understand like who's going to win this fight, who's going to win that fight. It also uh, l taught me the importance of keeping production buildings moving, or, or sorry, working and producing all the time. Uh, as obviously that was a very big key here, you can see in my unit queue there. So, um, you know, this isn't my traditional content, guys, but I've been looking for months. I've been looking for freaking months to get a CBA game up to the channel. Problem is, I just can't find recorded games anywhere. And there are a lot of lobbies, but like people are in and out of lobbies all the time. They don't really, you know, even like I joined a lobby once. And this is the other thing I have to about, say about scenarios here in a second. I joined a lobby and I was like, hey, guys, do you mind if you could like send me a couple wrecks? And they were kicking me. They were like, ah, dude, stop wasting our time. They waste no time whatsoever starting their lobbies. And, and so they really want to play some games. So, um, anywho, well played from everybody here. Um, you know, that's, that's the one thing I'm going to say if you're going to join these CBA lobbies. Be the change you want to see in the world. Be understanding for other people uh, who are joining in and trying to understand it. I don't know what it is about CBA lobbies or scenario lobbies in general. But generally speaking, people seem to be a little bit more judgy. And it could be because, like, if you steal all the gates, that, like, basically can lose your team the game. So people can be a little bit more, um, get a little frustrated if you're not setting up your, your teammate. But yeah, anytime I go to the lobby browser, like, look, I'm going to go to the lobby browser now. There's probably going to be a CBA lobby, all right? There's always one or two. What the? Hello? <laughs> what was that? Uh, there's always one or two CBA lobbies up. It's just a matter of finding them. And uh, look, like, there's CBA from Solid Steel. Uh, there's also CBA six times tech, uh, which... You know, it basically uses, like, the ability to get techs uh, six times. I, I, I'm i a bit of an old school guy. I wouldn't suggest doing that unless it's your thing. For me, it kind of ruins some of the strategy aspects of it. But anyways, uh, that's CBA. Let me know what you thought in the comments about this. I hope you guys enjoyed. It's a, one of the oldest scenarios. It might be the most played scenario in Age of Empires 2 of all time. Uh, behind some other scenarios that I'm going to hopefully bring to the channel. I was, uh, or I am recovering from a cold at the time of recording this, so uh, I hope that you guys uh, could bear with me here. I, I hopefully wasn't sounding too sniffly or anything, but I was just testing and trying to find content today, and uh, I was like, this game was too good, and this is a perfect opportunity to introduce this to people. So, a little bit of an intro to CBA. Let me know if you want to see some some games in the future. Um, the, the final thing I'll say about CBA that can make it very complicated if you're getting into it as a player is there so many unique units now? I feel like two out of every three games feels like sometimes it's impossible civilized. I don't know. Maybe that's just my impression after playing today. Remember, I did play over 2,000 hours when I first started. Just so many civs now. Usually having like goths, for example, can be much worse because there's so many good infantry and cavalry civilizations these days. But uh, Johnny made it happen. Hope you guys enjoyed. Give me your feedback in the comments. And uh, yeah, I'll see you all next time. Oh, actually, hold on. One final thing. So, guys, um, you know, if you did enjoy this, I also want to hear if you're interested in seeing different types of scenarios. I'm not going to let this replace my normal content. Uh, I have a lot of that coming, but I have a couple more in the works, um, whether that's old tower scenarios or wall builder scenarios or just more castle automatic type scenarios that are a little bit different from what you saw here. Uh, for example, CBA Hero, etc., etc. Let me know if you want to see those as well, because I think there's at least 10 that I played a lot over the years and I'd have really good insights on, and uh, I could get some games for you. Anyways, video officially ends now. See you all in the next one.